places and all walks of life, but wrong on the internet is just a, it's a special kind of wrong. It's the wrong that goes, today is the 18th of February, well actually today is the 17th of February. Really? Well I'm going to come to your home and I'm going to murder your dog. <laughs> <laughs> and really if you want to see this kind of example of the, the cesspit that is humanity, you just have to go to the YouTube comments. <laughs> but the YouTube comments are like the McDonald's of internet drama. You know, if, you, if, if you're a real kind of connoisseur of the internet drama, you want a, a really a tasty morsel, you want to find the niche things, like go to a knitting forum. You haven't lived. And, and the knitters are lovely, knitters are nice. They sit around and they chat and they make like little hats for babies. And then you mention that you're making a hat out of the wrong wool. Basically, you're Hitler. <laughs> now, now, I usually don't participate. I stay back popcorn, enjoy the show. It's better that way. But sometimes I feel kind of professionally obliged to participate, correct a few people. Um, my, my own profession, I'm actually a physics researcher, uh, quantum physics specifically, and you may be surprised to know that some people have incorrect ideas about quantum physics. <laughs> But now, obviously not any of you lovely people, the other people, less intelligent, less attractive people, other people. And you, sometimes you just have to jump in, you know, and it comes up a lot like when people talk about quantum teleportation. And, and people get so excited because teleportation, like it's like Star Trek and stuff, you know? And, and being a quantum physicist and talking about quantum teleportation is like crushing people's dreams one by one. Because <laughs> quantum teleportation is not really what you think it is. So like, uh, we start, let's start with something small, like an atom, like, like small. And I want to transport, teleport this atom from here to behind the bar. And poof, disappears from here, materials is behind the bar. T teleportation. Fantastic. Except that's not quite what happens. What actually happens is that me and, and the barmaid back there, we have prearranged you know, uh, to have an, a pair of entangled particles. She has one, I have the other, and then I have this other atom which has some quantum state, and I do science. And the quantum state that was on my atom goes over to the other half of the entangled pair. So I start with an entangled particle and an atom, and then at the end they're junk, she's got the entangled particle that now has the state of the atom, but nothing has moved between here and there, it's just the state of the atom has moved, which is kind of a little less pizzazz. Um, but, but people see the silver, li silver lining at this, you know, they're like, okay, that's, that's, that's okay, we can say this. I mean, entanglement is instantaneous, yeah, yeah. So that means we can do faster than light communication. Possibilities. I could be living on Mars and still know instantly that someone was wrong on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> and then the quantum physicist comes along and goes, because ah, ah, ah. the entanglement is instantaneous. But entanglement isn't information. So what actually has to happen is that I do science, then I, I have to pick up the phone, which is regular old, slower than light communication, like, okay, I did the thing, yeah, I did the thing, and I got this, okay, you need to push, no, push the other button, okay, push the, yeah, okay, now, why do you want to kill my dog? <laughs> this is kind of more what quantum teleportation involves, and believe me, I don't want to be Dr. Downer on this one. I want teleportation as much as the next person. My job involves a lot of travel to conferences and things, and, and it sounds like fun, but it involves mostly sitting in Heathrow Airport during the summer, transferring to get to a conference that well, might not be even that interesting. And there is an easy way to tell if a conference is going to be good. All you have to do is look at the food. <laughs> <laughs> food is excellent. The talks are going to be fantastic. Wilted lettuce, wilted physicists. <laughs> And, by the way, how are the sweets tonight? <laughs> <laughs> just, just bear 
mind, I would be significantly funnier if those were full-size Mars bars. <laughs> so so if, you, if you look at the food, you know it's going to be worth your while, but you have to actually get there and then you're stuck for a week. And what I want is I want quantum teleportation. You're just like, here I am. Egg salad sandwiches. Mm. And I'm home. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm complaining, but I mean, compared to climatologists and immunologists and things, I don't really have much to complain about people being wrong on the internet, because you know, people like quantum physics and they're like really enthusiastic about it and they want to talk about it and they want to know more. It's great, but they're wrong like, <laughs> all the time. And I can kind of, I can get, I can get why this happens because I can kind of see how when someone hears me talking about quantum physics, it's not necessarily that distinguishable from some random guy on the internet talking complete nonsense about quantum physics. So I'm going to tell you a bit about quantum physics so that the next time you'll be able to distinguish quantum physics from complete and utter nonsense. <laughs> so, we we'll start small, okay? Think of the number, okay? Add one, now take away one. Is that your number? <laughs> <laughs> I, I could have made it more complicated, but we've all had a few drinks. Which is pretty <laughs> by, by the way, is anyone else like me? And when someone says, think of a number, you go, X. <laughs> <laughs> so so the, the principle is the same. It's like you take something and you add something, and as long as you immediately take it away again, it's the same. It's just the same. It's mathematics. So, for example, on the stage, there is me, and there is Tom Hiddleston, and minus Tom Hiddleston. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I know he's not really here, I'm just saying, mathematically, they are equivalent. I have very optimistic maths. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we can kind of, we can take this further, you know, maybe, okay, so I, I am one human being, but I'm also two half human beings. Half Suzanne plus half Suzanne is 100% whole Suzanne. Right? So we're going to do the same thing. I've got half Suzanne, half Suzanne, and half a horse, <laughs> and minus half a horse. Half a horse. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so half a human, half a human, for those keeping score at home, half a human, half a human, half a horse, minus half a horse. That's, that's equivalent to what you see right now. So if I arrange that so that's half a human, half a horse, half a human minus half a horse. This right here, centaur. <laughs> you, you can do this with all sorts of things. You can have centaurs, fauns, mermaids, like whole Narnia. <laughs> and this, this probably sounds like a silly thing to do, right? But uh, humans and horses are quite easy to work with, but sometimes you can do much more interesting quantum mechanical things if you have centaurs instead. Um, and, and, you know, I'm, I'm working on a problem at the moment, where you've, you've got this centaur, but you've also now got this half-human, half-minus-horse thing. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you could send that off to the glue factory and wherever you send half-humans. <laughs> um, biologists. Um, but what I'm working on is trying to, trying to maybe see if I can rearrange this so I can actually have two centaurs for the price of one. So, so now that I've told you a little bit about my research, I hope that you'll quite confidently on the internet be able to distinguish real quantum physics from something that's just utter nonsense. Uh, so I will leave you with that tonight. And just remember, every time you clap, someone is wrong on the internet. Thanks very much.